and respect its memory of Mark, but you go back to Electric Warrior and there's the real Mark Boland. It was an album that was uh, uh, bringing him back bringing him back, you know, he did sat and really constructed and really thought about it and, and maybe he was trying to uh, recreate um, yeah, himself and finding it, I think, on the album, finding it somewhat, you know, there was a commercial value again there. He'd been through his Fat Elvis period, he was making groovy records, you know, so he went on and up. Well, Dandy in the Underworld was his last album, last studio album, and uh, it came out in around 1977. And uh, it was the last time I actually met Mark was when I went to uh, Manchester Television Studios, Granada TV Studios, and uh, he just started doing his own TV show. Remember, keep a little Mark in your heart, and we'll be back the same Mark time, same Mark channel. Meanwhile, this is Dandy the Underworld. <laughs> He had done some work, uh, he'd been interviewed on a program for Granada Television called, uh, it was with Telly Savalas and he had literally sort of turned this interview on its head and started interviewing Telly Savalas. It was a sort of almost like a, a defence mechanism perhaps and they saw it and they thought you know, he's, he's got something here. And eventually, Mark Boland was given his own TV show, and it was called Mark. The whole idea was that he was going to get up, he was going to play his music, and then he'd bring on music guests, and he'd interview them, and they'd play their music. And they were bands like the Boomtown Rats, and Generation X had come on. And suddenly, Mark Boland was cool again. The biggest and the best so far this week are an amazing group called Jam! The series Mark and Muriel Young, I mean, she used to do all the, I think, Blue Peter things, and then she went up to Yorkshire Television. It was the finest six TV shows that I can ever remember, because they were done all but live, you know, with a, a few kids in the audience. And the atmosphere was so great. It was Mark's first rebound full on into the music biz. And it was uncanny how he balanced the show. Like it, on each show, you might get Haircut 100, the Smith Brothers, uh, uh, I can't remember these people would come and go, these bands. But every band that he had on, Thompson Twins, a few months later, Jam, all become massive in their own right. And uh, Mark would say, oh, it's a new band. Uh, and they get up and do their number. It was just totally wonderful. The last show had uh, David Bowie as a special guest, and that was unusual. I was, I was fascinated. I mean, Newman and I had been David's bass player and drummer just some months before, or a couple of years before, and uh, then we were now Mark's bass player and drummer. I think there might have been a uh, a bit of a wind-up going on between them, but a healthy one. I mean, I think a lot of the great music comes out of the fission that people have. I went to the studio and saw David and, and Mark doing their, their big number together, and uh, the whole thing sort of descended into farce, really, because it took so long to get the, um, get the number sorted out that Mark and David wanted to do together. Being in the days of strong union representation, they pulled the plugs on uh, Mark and David while they were trying to record the song, and the studio was plunged into darkness. So I remember the producer having fits, and uh, Mark was in tears, and uh, David Bowie was saying, "This is really Polaroid." He was saying <laughs> his pet phrase at the time, I think. But uh, it was a historic afternoon. It was great to see, and of course they did actually have the two. Uh, they managed to get the number they were doing together um, on tape and uh, it was in the show, but that was the last time I saw Mark, was falling off the stage at uh, Granada TV. He stumbled and tripped and fell off the stage. I've half written a book and in it I've put uh, the incident which talks about 
when Mark fell off of the he didn't fall, he tripped and sprained his ankle and for some days had to hobble about and if you notice on the, the last episode of that series they run the credits along the bottom because <laughs> they had to read the remark with his ankle which was swelled up like a football done up with a bandage so they run the credits along the bottom I definitely think he was on the rise again. He had uh, dropped his weight when I met him. He, he was curtailing his, uh, his, his drug activity and uh, he looked pretty good. And the, 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 his self-esteem probably shot up by having this television program. You know, that was really quite a nice thing to have at, at that stage when everyone kind of looked at him as being washed up. The TV shows came about, I think, through Muriel Young. And she saw in Mark somebody who could get that young female audience that came home from school about 4.15 in the afternoon with nothing to watch on television, right? And Mark Bolan could bring on, with his pool, a lot of the young bands. And it was the time of punk. He, he saw himself as the godfather of punk. But he picked that word up in, the, in America because, you know, he's he called himself a punk in America. I think it's an American slang word in, you know, and he was certainly talking about being a punk in 72. And he did those shows, you know, the Mark Boland specials. And I'd travel up to Granada with him on the train and everything. And he loved it. Loved it. He was always looking to the future uh, and what was going to be the next, um, you know, uh, influence in the music. In 77, my ex-wife had a single. Uh, Mary Hopkin had a single. And she got uh, to appear on top of the Pops. And I accompanied her. And backstage, uh, where the dressing, dressing rooms were. Mark and, was with Gloria Jones, his, his wife, and I was with Mary, and we, the four of us just bumped into each other. And we st there was like one minute, one second of silence, and then Mark just opened his arms and threw his arms around me and hugged me really, really tight, kissed me. Uh, Gloria was hugging Mary. I don't even know if they met before, but it was like all hugs and kisses and like nothing happened. It was, a, it was like the, the warmest reunion. The last time I saw Mark, he insisted on giving me a whole lot of stuff. You know, he gave me a whole bunch of clothes, you know, he gave me some books. Um, and kind of, not that I was, a, you know, an ungracious receiver, but he kind of pushed them on me, you know, he gave me tons of stuff, you know. Well, I know why now. The day that Mark died, we'd had a, a fantastic afternoon in a coffee shop just around the corner from Olympic Studios and we sat outside because it was nice and sunny with Mark and Gloria, Newman, Dino, Tony Howard, myself, uh, Miller Anderson, all with a banana milkshake and a donut and uh, talking about 